Saudi Arabia is a country in Western Asia with a rich religious history, especially within the context of Islam. But do you think this faith ideology has always been that way? Or was there any other profound religion besides Islam? Stay tuned as we dive deep into the heart of Saudi Arabia to unearth ancient secrets that confront both atheists and believers, uncovering discoveries that could forever change the paradigm of human belief. When you think of Saudi Arabia, your mind would most likely go to Mecca, an indigenous holy site where Muslim pilgrims gather annually to pray. It is rare to associate the country with any other religion, however, recent discoveries by scholars have altered this perception. In February 1986, a young man from Jubail, a city in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia, made a shocking discovery. He decided to put his new vehicle through its paces on the dunes, west of the coastal city, and it was during this outing that he made two startling discoveries. The first was that neither he nor his car were well suited to dune bashing, as both man and machine found themselves stuck in fast sand. In an attempt to free himself from the entrapment of the quicksand, he discovered he was on top of a wall that disappeared into the sand. This report was published in the journal Arabian Archaeology and Epigraphy in 1994. Although the young man had no idea what he had found at the time of discovery, he quickly realized that it must have been very old. Having freed his vehicle and returned to Jubail, he alerted the authorities of this discovery. Further research revealed that he had stumbled on the remains of a Christian church, long buried beneath the drifting sands. Archaeologists who later excavated the site found an open-walled courtyard, about 20 meters long, with a doorway leading into three rooms. The central room at the eastern end of the structure was determined to be the sanctuary where the altar would have stood. The room to the north was where the bread and wine for the Christian ritual of the Eucharist would have been assembled. To the south was the sacristy, where the sacred vessels and the priest's robes were kept. All the walls were covered in gypsum plaster, with clear impressions of four crosses, the distinctive symbol of Christianity, each about 30 centimeters tall. Several stone columns remained intact, as did a pair of decorative plaster friezes, featuring a pattern of flowers linked by vine motifs. Further findings revealed that this was not just any church, as archaeologists dated it to the 4th century AD, predating the coming of Islam by about predating the coming of Islam by about 300 years, and proving to be among the oldest known Christian churches in the world. The discovery was just one small piece in a historical jigsaw puzzle which has since been all but completed, assembling pictures of a time when two faiths, Islam and Christianity, coexisted along the shore of the Arabian Gulf. Now, 36 years after the young Saudi man's discovery, another puzzle has come to light with the excavation of a Christian monastery on Sania Island, just off the coast of the Umm al quwain in the United Arab Emirates. Using pottery and carbon dating of organic remains found in the foundations of the complex, the monastery has been dated to be between 534 and 656 AD, a period that spans the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad, who was born around the year 570 and died in 632. As you might have been wondering if Christianity has been in existence in Saudi Arabia over the years, why is the religion far from known to be practiced in the country in recent times? As we dig further into this discovery, the answer to that will be unearthed, relieving your curiosity. Archaeologists believe that this discovered site appears to have been abandoned during the 8th century, not as a result of a clash between the two faiths, but because of internal conflict within Islam at the time. Tim Power, an associate professor of archaeology at the United Arab Emirates University in Al Ain and co-director of the Siniya Island Archaeology Project, stated that after the site was abandoned, the walls eventually collapsed and the windblown sands moved over them. This left the low mounds with the building debris, pottery, glass, and coins, which were visible on the surface. Power added, there is absolutely no evidence of destruction or of deliberate damage to the site. We even have the stem of the glass chalice that was being used to deliver the the Eucharist in its original place, and the bowl that was used for mixing the Eucharist wine also in situ. It really does feel like they just got up one day and walked away. Power believes the site was abandoned not because of religious differences, but because of the Abbasid invasion of 750 AD, when the Abbasid Caliphate, based in Mesopotamia, overthrew the Umayyads. He said, this fits our ceramic dating and radiocarbon dating for the abandonment. We know from the Arabic historical sources that the Abbasid invasion was very violent, and the coastal towns of the Emirates were destroyed. He concluded that these people fled in terror at the prospect of the invasion by the imperial authorities in Iraq, who were trying to maintain control of their restive provinces. The existence of the monastery right up until this moment in the mid-8th century, more than a hundred years after the death of Prophet Muhammad, is evidence that there was clearly a degree of intercommunal, interfaith tolerance at the local level. 
Powers says it is a common mistake to assume that Christians of the Gulf at the time of the rise of Islam were outsiders. There is a great deal of historical and inscriptional evidence that tells us that most of the Arabian Peninsula was probably Christianized until the rise of Islam. And although Christianity began to wane as Islam rose, Christians were not seen as outsiders but as family. Over the course of several generations, Christian Arabs started to convert to Islam, and as a Muslim, you might have a cousin who is a Christian. This explains how Christianity thinned out gradually over the years in Saudi Arabia. The knowledge derived from the discovery of the ancient church in 1986 by the young man from Jubayu has proven to great length the existence of Christianity in Saudi Arabia. However, this is not the only evidence pointing to the Christian faith's existence in Saudi Arabia. There is a second discovery of a Christian monastery in the United Arab Emirates. In 1992, the newly formed Abu Dhabi Islands Archaeological Survey, founded by the United Arab Emirates' then-president, Sheikh Zayed, began investigations on three islands. They found tantalizing clues on one of the islands named Serbaniyas, just seven kilometers off the coast in the western region of Abu Dhabi. The remains of several courtyard houses and pottery fragments dating back to the 6th and 7th centuries AD were identified. This archaeological survey reported its findings in a paper published in 1997 that a very large and complex structure emerged which now proves to be a monastery, with a church standing in its center within the courtyard. There is now a wealth of evidence, both textual and archaeological, testifying to the existence of Christianity in the Gulf from at least the 4th century AD until the first couple of centuries of Islam. In the midst of a vast, unyielding desert, a story unfolds, one that has been retold, cherished, and revered for millennia, the story of a single man, Moses, and the holy site referred to as Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, also known as Jabal Musa, meaning Mountain of Moses, is a holy site for the three known Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. The mountain is 2,285 meters high, with its top region known as the Arabian Nubian Shield, consisting of crystalline and granite formations with volcanic elements. According to the Old Testament, Moses led the Israelites to a mountain that was enveloped in smoke, fire, and thunder. At the top of this mountain, Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. In Christianity, it serves as a prelude, foreshadowing the New Covenant through Jesus Christ. However, in Judaism, the mountain stands for the testament between God and the Israelites, as it is the place where they were transformed from a group of tribes to a united kingdom. On the other hand, in Islam, Mount Sinai is a stage for numerous discourses. Prophet Moses, also called Prophet Musa, holds a special place in Islamic teaching, with his experiences on Mount Sinai forming pivotal episodes in the Quran narrative. This brings us to the question that has intrigued many scholars and explorers for centuries. Where exactly is Mount Sinai located? A mountain with such a prestigious history must definitely have a specific location that you can point to on the map and say, here it is. The mountain has traditionally been located in the center of the Sinai Peninsula, a portion of land between Africa and the Middle East. However, this location has been debated by many scientists. With newer discoveries, experts believe they have finally found the holiest site in the Bible, miles from where it was previously assumed to have existed. Compelling evidence matching the biblical account is found in the Arabian Peninsula. Many people believe that Mount Sinai is Jabal Makla, a mountain located in northwest Saudi Arabia near the Jordan border above the Gulf of Aqaba. The Gulf of Aqaba is the northern arm of the Red Sea, penetrating between Saudi Arabia and the Sinai Peninsula. It varies in width from 12 to 17 miles and is 110 miles long. The Gulf lies in a pronounced cleft between hills rising abruptly to about 2,000 feet, and it is part of the complex East African river system as its head touches the Egyptian, Israeli, Jordanian, and Saudi Arabian boundaries. Consequently, the Jabal Makla has blackened peaks as if scorched by the sun or fire, and lies near Nueva Beach, where scientists have found land paths underneath the water, depicting where God would have parted the Red Sea for Moses and the Israelites in the book of Exodus. According to biblical accounts, the Israelites were followed by Egyptians and chariots, but when they reached land on the other side of the water, the sea swallowed the Egyptians. According to Swedish scientist Dr. Leonard Moller, a chariot-like shape was found in coral in the area Area, and he noted to the outlet that the metal and wood had long ago disintegrated. On the way from the beach to the possible Mount Sinai is a large split rock with signs of water erosion despite being in the middle of the desert. Scientists believe that this distinct landmark could be the rock God commanded Moses to strike, which then gushed forth water, miraculously providing for the Israelite population as recorded in Exodus 17 verse 6. 
The experts also discovered a site which appeared to be an altar near the base of the mountain, similar to the altar Moses was said to have built at the foot of Mount Sinai from uncut stones in Exodus 24, verse 3. Archaeologists are well known for uncovering ancient history, but this 8,000-year-old settlement found in Saudi Arabia offers a rare view of prehistoric religion. A group of Saudi and French archaeologists working at a site southwest of the Saudi Arabian capital of Riyadh and led by the Saudi Heritage Commission uncovered the Neolithic era remains using laser scanning, aerial photography, drones, and various forms of surveying. The scientists located the settlement of al fa an archaeological site that has previously turned up evidence of a strong trade network that sustained an ancient city. They found a stone temple and pieces of an altar along the edge of Mount Tuag. The ancient settlement was accompanied by 2,807 graves from different time periods, and the team also identified the foundation of four monumental buildings, corner towers, and open courtyards, all of which contained underground reservoirs to store water for agricultural use. Additionally, archaeologists also found evidence of an intricate irrigation system with canals and cisterns, which would have been used to water several agricultural fields. Access to water allowed the city to thrive amid one of the aridest deserts, and rock drawings etched on Tuag Mountain reveal activities such as fighting, hunting, and traveling. While excavation and fieldwork of al fa have been ongoing for over four decades, this discovery of human settlement has offered a more comprehensive overview of religious life in the ancient city. Saudi Arabia has been known for centuries to be a country that practices Islam, but with these discoveries made by scientists, we can deduce that this might not have been the case in ancient times. One can only imagine what big ancient secret is waiting to be unearthed along the terrain of the Arabian sands. What discovery did you find most intriguing? Is it the discovery of the evidence of Christianity in this renowned Islamic country? Or that the holiest mountain recorded in the Bible might actually be in Saudi Arabia? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.